Welcome back out there, and I'm really excited now because we're in Wyoming on the Green River. Uh, we're heading kind of towards Jackson Hole and uh, Yellowstone National Park maybe the next couple days, and we wanted to stop here and do some fishing because I've heard the Green River is awesome. I always heard about it in Utah, but here we are in, uh, in Wyoming, and it looks awesome. So our puppy's trying to join us, and uh, we're probably going to stay here for a day or two just so we don't have to enter the park on the, on the weekend. But uh, this river has obviously been engineered a little bit, or maybe a lot for fishing because there's a lot of unnatural rocks and dams like this one out here in front of us. And uh, so we're just going to sit here and enjoy the evening. And if I see a hatch come off, and I'm going to go out and give it a spin. And uh, I'm going to sit here and enjoy my girl beer. Yes. Over here, you can see some of that artificial structure I was talking about. When they want a river to be really good for fish, they'll add in big rocks and things like that so the fish have somewhere to hang out. And it's not just a straight, smooth run the whole time because most of the rocks in this area are naturally small. So they put in these fish structures like this one. And upstream, there's a bunch of little rocks and things like that on the river, or big rocks, I should say, that give the fish somewhere to hide. So I'm going to wander out here and try and fish below that structure and see if there's anything down there. Unfortunately, the camera I was using there on my, uh, my head strap got lost on this trip somewhere in Yellowstone. And it was uh, um, all the footage from this particular catch got uh, lost for the whole trip that I used on that, that camera for. It was really sad. But uh, here I was working behind this big rock. It was a nice deep run there. And I hooked up with this nice brown. And uh, I was using one of my Blackbird's Nest nymphs, running it really deep. I just cast it up into the uh, white water there at the head and let it pull it down right into the bottom. And I just, he just barely touched this thing and I felt him down there um, and uh, hooked up with him. I was using my little, my little uh, three-weight Finwick fin glass rod, so this was quite a, quite a war. Uh, he was into the uh, reel and running drag out quite a few times, uh, which doesn't happen all that often to me here in California. But on this trip uh, uh, here at the Green River, I got this one guy and uh, I got one later. And then back into Yellowstone and into Montana, I picked up plenty of fish that spent some time on the reel awesome. As you can see here, it's uh, quite a fight. I'm still working in pretty good. And uh, it's kind of dusky. It made this cool image there against the, uh, the background looking west across these mountains with basically no trees on them. It's uh, really quite a beautiful place. I do believe this area gets fished really heavily though. Um, there was a drift boat put in right there by where I was camped, uh, where that opening shot was taken. I was actually sitting on the ramp and uh, nobody came by while I was there. I think the water's a little low to run a drift boat through right now, but um, it was nice camping all the way up along the green here uh, above the uh, highway where we were hanging out. I recorded this in real time so that uh, you could see how long it took me to get him in. And uh, I was glad I had my net here. This would have been really tough to, to land this fish without a net. The smaller fish are really easy to land without a net. It's not a big issue, but uh, these bigger ones like this. And of course, I was sitting way up above the water there, so once again, hard to get down into the river to uh, keep them underwater. I'm doing my best to, to keep these fish, especially these big ones. I really don't want to hurt them, and I know I'm going to let them go. So I was doing my best to keep them in the water. shot up a fish you can't see. <laughs> Go figure. He was a solid uh, probably 18 inches, which was really nice. I'm pretty happy about that fish. Beautiful. 
German Browns are known to hunt kind of in the evening time, especially the bigger ones. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's easier for them to catch big, catch minnows and stuff like that. But it's always good to hunt or to fish for German Browns in the evening. So I'm going to try a big streamer now. I picked that one up on a nymph. Uh, nothing was hitting the dry flies. I didn't see any big fish rising on dry flies. So I switched over to nymphs and I picked up that nice brown. So um, I'm going to try this good sized streamer here and see what happens. This was the next morning there and uh, nothing was happening with the streamer that night. It was just, obviously it was getting quite dark. So uh, I packed it in and headed out the next morning here. And I started picking up basically right away uh, these nice littler fish in these flat runs. The water out there is only about a foot deep. And I started picking up little fish on a uh, hopper dropper rig I was running. They just kept hitting that big uh, fat stimulator that I normally use. And that was so, it was, it was a good bit of fun. Maybe that was like the second cast there that I picked that fish up and uh, it started to get to really get to be uh, some fun, good fishing for smaller fish. That's a good start. Just a few feet down here, I, I picked up another fish. I think I, the first one was a little rainbow, and this one here I think was a little brown. So back and forth between the fish, but uh, good fun. I, it's just so much fun to catch fish on a dry fly. I don't get to do it very much here, and uh, for some reason I just don't fish dries a lot here in California. But uh, here in uh, in Montana, Wyoming, uh, yeah, Wyoming, <laughs> I uh, did, and it was great. Oh, man. Well, that was a good start. Two nice fish there. Two nice, nice little fish, a brown and a rainbow. Can't complain about that. And uh, my feet are frozen, so I have to take, take my chances. I fish for a little bit and then get out and fish for a little bit. Let's see how it goes. And here's another one just uh, downstream from uh, where I was before. And uh, all in this kind of eight to uh, nine inch range of these little little fish. That one actually took the uh, dropper. The second fish today by the tail. I don't usually use a net with my smaller fish. Just to make sure to get my hand wet and turn them loose real quick. I was using barbless hooks there. You can see it came out real easy. I think it just is a faster way to get the fish back in the river. A lot of these bushes here along the creek are rose bushes. And they've got these nice nice rose hips on them. You can see these. And they're at certain times of year they can be very sweet. Not very exciting right now, but they're very high in vitamin C and you can actually take them and make tea out of them, dry them out and make tea. Um, but when they start to crinkle up on the edge of the seat, they're very smooth, very smooth on the outside. Uh, once they get kind of crinkly a little bit, usually they're a little sweeter and something a little better to eat. And uh, they can be quite, quite yummy at times. I've had some really sweet rose hips before. And here I am back at that uh, pool there by my camper. You can see the camper up there on the hill and the boat launch there and then the big rock I was standing on the night before. And I had footage of uh, these fish down in this hole. I took my my helmet cam there and I put it on my trekking pole and I stuck it down the river and I, I scanned around with it and then I brought it back and I plugged it into my tablet and I could look at what was underwater. I noticed there's this big huge school of fish there. Uh, they, they weren't uh, there were some trout down there, but there was also a bunch of these other fish. And so I just went back over and I started fishing. I hooked up with this fish and he was, um, I'm using my five weight there, you can see. And uh, this fish was a good fight. It, it was on the reel as well. You can see right there that it's pulling out drag. And uh, it's not a trout. It's like a white fish or, or something like that. I'm not sure the uh, species, maybe somebody can put that in the comments and let me know uh, what I caught here. But he sure fought hard. Uh, so it was pretty cool. Yes. Try
trout in general uh, aren't known for uh, being a particularly strong fighting fish, uh, amazingly enough. And uh, when you hook up with something that's not a trout, uh, and you're expecting to catch them, it's surprising how hard they fight for the size of the fish that it is. I think I saw a study once where they compared uh, the swimming efficiency or the power and endurance of a trout to a goldfish, and the goldfish just killed the trout. It was so much stronger and uh, and had so much more endurance than a trout did. It was, it was pretty pretty wild. And anybody who's ever caught a carp before realizes how strong carp can be, and which is what a goldfish is. And uh, this is some sort of a minnow species here. It was quite fun to catch. I, I could uh, spend a day catching these guys and be pretty happy about it. You can actually see there from the way I pulled them in, uh, this, I actually hooked this fish uh, in the side, just behind mid-body. So that also helped him fight harder because uh, you fit, hook a fish in the head and it's hard for them to fight away from you, but you hook a fish in the tail and they can run like crazy. So uh, it gives them more leverage. I'm not sure how I managed to hook him there, but I did. And I'm, I was amazed it didn't come off. I was using the barbless hook again. And then he went and rolled around the net for a while and tangled himself up. Once again, I lost the uh, footage for that catch, so I don't get a very good image of him there. I need to get a little better at showing my fish to the camera so you guys can actually see what's going on. Uh, but I did have a good shot of him on that on that helmet cam, which as I said before, is lost. It looks like all those fish down there weren't trout. That was a some sort of a minnow species. But heck of a good fight all the same. I snagged him in the side and man, he could fight like crazy. They're strong anyways. And then to snag one in the side like that, extra power. So I'm gonna move on and see if we can catch fish elsewhere. Well, that's the end of our trip on Green River. I caught that sweet brown and a whole bunch of little uh, rainbows and browns there. And that was pretty awesome. Uh, overall, I really like this river, it's pretty sweet. And so we were gonna stay another day, but we ran out of water in our rig and my filter broke for some reason, so we don't have any drinking water. So we're gonna move on north towards Jackson Hole and find somewhere maybe tonight so uh, I can fish again and get another video. So I will see you next time on Out There. Thank you for watching.